So in this video, I'm going to show a way for determining the volume in my coffee mug. So if you've watched the other videos in this series, I showed you how I did surface modeling, integrated surface modeling with bodies. In this case, I'm curious, you know, how many ounces will this mug hold? Or is there a requirement for ounces? And so I may tell my students, I need a coffee mug with this amount of ounces. So um, this is a way I sh have my students do it. There may be other ways to do it. I'd be curious to know about other ways to do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up creating a volume here, solid volume, and then measuring the volume. I'm going to create a solid and measure the volume. That's essentially what I'm going to do and leave that as a measure. But I'm going to extrapolate, or extract, I should say, the data that currently exists. So before I do this, I'm going to, I've created a geometric set called volume, so all of the data is going to be in this. It's not a solidified group, it's just a separate geometric set. I'm going to create a little reference plane here that's going to represent the top of my mug. And so that's going to be parallel through point. So my reference is going to be the XY, and my point is going to be there. So that kind of just shows the top of the mug. And so what I'd like to do is just offset down just a wee bit. Just a little bit. Let's just go maybe five millimeters down. And this will be where I say the top of my mug is going to be. So um, now I want to take this surface, which is defining the mug volume, and I want to copy paste it into here. I'm going to copy paste special as a result with the link. So that's going to have this tied to this surface. So if this surface changes size, this will change size. Right there. And why don't I do a split on this. Let me get back to the GSD workbench. And on the operations toolbar, I can find the split tool. I'm going to split this surface with that reference plane. So that represents the top. And I'm going to fill this. This will probably solidify with that being open. But for completeness, I'm going to close that up. And then let's join it. There we go. So that's a closed volume or closed surface easy enough right so um, next thing I need is a volume or I should say a body that I can solidify into and I've already got one created I called it volume and again that follows my name matching rules even though this isn't a solidify group I like to keep this organized so we know what it's there for and this will not be boolean in later either it's just there to hold my volume information so I'm going to go back to our design workbench. I'm going to turn this into a volume, close surface, and I forgot to activate the correct surface. So define a work object, surface, close surface, and there we go. So that's a closed surface. So I can hide here. So that's a closed surface. So let me check my units for let me check my units for volume right now i'm sitting at gallons so if i'm not good at converting ounces to gallons but let's say that we wanted to get a tenth of a gallon so um, i'm not even sure what this is but let's just see what this volume is so i won't even we can play around with it later but so I've got a volume. So what I can do is I can do a measure inertia. So I'm going to go to inertia. I'm going to select this volume. And then notice the volume is coming out to be uh, 0 0.131 gallons. So if I, you know, if I go back, let me let's look at that one more time. This is for the sake of my students. So if I look at volume, um, the units of measuring Katia for volume your standard metric, your inches, you got a liter, barrel, cubic yard, centimeter, but there's no ounces sitting here. 
and so I'm just going to use gallons the easy conversion so so whenever I do the inertia tool and I select the body it's giving me that in gallons so if I say hey we need 20 ounces of coffee at least in my in your mug or 15 or whatever it needs to be you can do the conversion and once you get I'm going to create a measure here for that and then once you let's say you're a little short or you're a little tall uh, or a little too much or a little bit not enough you can go in and change the I'm not even going to hide here I don't need that anymore but you can go in primarily here this is going to be the body you can go in and change the relevant uh, geometry in this case probably wireframe entities I hide all this because they were put together as a join so you can unhide this so as an example this point is really it's a point let me see so you got a point here so that point is got a what looks like a radius of 44 something millimeters and I can increase or decrease that radius. Also, it had a height parameter there. I can, around 101 millimeters, I can increase or decrease that based on the amount of ounces I'm looking for. There's, I can manipulate these points, these lines. I can manipulate the curvature of this conic here. So that's a lot, or connect curve, if you will. A lot of things I can do to get the ounces I'm looking for. So. And then once I make the changes, I can just come back down here and check out my volume measure and see what it's looking like. So um, this is primarily, again, for my students. I want them to work around with extracting data from their surfaces and using that data for, uh, in this case, some mass, you know, mass properties, in this case, volume, if you will. Uh, so I right, hope that helps. Have a great day.